creation. You know, God said, I want a world. So he made it. The sun, the moon, the stars, and the world. And he thought that. He said, what a beautiful world that it is. And I believe he is right up.
Verse 1, beginning uh, in the second chapter, begins like this. Now we beseech you, brother, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not so soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of, of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and sign and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they shall believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believeth not the truth, but hath pleasure in unrighteousness. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, as we come to you this morning, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for this another opportunity to be able to stand and proclaim your word. And Father, I pray that you would just be with us this morning and open our, our hearts and our minds to your word. Lord, that we be able to, to know exactly, Father, uh, what you have for us. And I pray, Father, that you would just be with each person that is listening today, Father, wherever they're at. Of whatever they're doing, that, Father, you would just speak to their hearts. And, Father, that they, through that uh, speaking to their hearts, Lord, if they're lost, that they would realize they're lost. And they would give their heart to you. And, Father, I pray for those that are your children, that, Lord, that uh, through this word, this message today, Father, that we can, each one, just uh, be... Uh, just busy about your business because, Father, we know that we are living in the days in which the Apostle Paul spoke of in, in 1 Thessalonians and how that we are so close to that time when Jesus Christ will come back for his church. And then, Lord, as we look at 2 Thessalonians here and we see what the Apostle Paul said here, Lord, we know that these were things that were going to happen uh, at the time of the church being translated, and at the time that uh, after that, that all these things would, would come about. Lord, be with us. I pray that you be with me. Hide, my, hide me behind the cross, that I can just stand here and proclaim your word, and Father, that I would just proclaim it in truth. And Lord, we just pray, just be with us, guide us and direct us, and we just ask this all in your Son, Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. You know, as we look at this this morning, and we, we think about what the Apostle Paul has to say uh, concerning these things, you know, we see that as we would go back and just kind of review what Paul said to the church at Thessalonica in the first, chat, uh, in the first uh, epistle that he wrote to them, we see that, you know, that Paul told them uh, that there was going to be a time when the church would be translated. Uh, we see that uh, as Paul wrote uh, this first letter to the church there, he spoke about how that they had been told uh, that, uh, uh, that the, uh, the, the church, the translation of the church or the rapture, uh, that it had already taken place. But we see that, that Paul told them uh, in that first, uh, first Thessalonians, 
He said, I will not have you ignorant, brother, concerning the things, or concerning them which are asleep, and, and that ye sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. And he said, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And you know, we see uh, that Paul, as he spoke there concerning uh, the time of the rapture of the church, we see that Paul spoke to the church there uh, and told them uh, that we as believers, uh, and we see that, uh, that uh, Jesus Christ himself said, uh, he gave us a promise in the 14th chapter of the book of John. Because we see that uh, it says there, as uh, Jesus spoke to uh, his disciples, he said, I go away to prepare a place for you, and if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. In the book of Acts, uh, as we see, the Bible tells us there that, that uh, Jesus, uh, as he uh, ascended into heaven, uh, we see that the Bible tells us uh, uh, that the uh, apostles, uh, the disciples, they stood and they gazed up into heaven. And, and we see that, uh, as the, the Bible tells us, uh, uh, that there was stood by them, as it says in the, the first chapter, in, in verse 10, it says, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as, they, as he went up, speaking about Jesus, as he ascended after his death, burial, resurrection, and then as he walked here on the earth uh, for uh, uh, many days after that, and then we see the Bible tells us that he uh, ascended into heaven. And as he ascended there, the Bible says as he went up, he says, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. And I believe, you know, this was two uh, messengers from God. I believe this was probably two of God's holy angels. And, and, he, and, and the angel said uh, uh, to them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? And this is what is important for us to understand. It says, uh, This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So we see, you know, these two men that were there, these two that were in white apparel, as they stood there, they said, He's going away, but He's coming back again. And, and as He comes back, uh, uh, He is going to come, uh, first of all, uh, he is going to come for the church, that the church may be translated. Uh, we see that uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, the Bible says uh, that there was a man named Enoch. And, and this Enoch, he walked with God. And, and the Bible says uh, uh, that he would walk with God and then he was not, for God took him. Uh, and we see that that taking uh, that uh, we see there of Enoch, uh, uh, we can see was a foreshadow of what uh, that God is going to do through with Jesus Christ as he comes for the church. That we are going to be translated. That we are going to be taken out of this world uh, at the, the time of the trumpet uh, of God as it sounds. Uh, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first out of the ground. Uh, and then those that remain, those that are alive, that are of the church, that are believers uh, uh, who have been saved by the grace of God. We are going to be uh, taken up uh, with them uh, and, and we are going to be with the Lord. And we see that Paul told the church at Thessalonica this very thing. And, and in the second, uh, uh, second Thessalonians, the second chapter here, we see that he says, as he begins chapter 2, he says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by him, our gathering together unto him. Now, Paul was talking and, and he was giving us uh, a, a little bit more of that as he said that we are going to be gathered together unto him. That as the church we are going to be gathered together, uh, uh, we are all going to come together and be taken out of this world uh, at the, the, the appointed time when, uh, when God says it is finished, uh, the time of the church is over, and, and it is time uh, that you go and get uh, uh, my children and bring them home. We see that this is what the Apostle Paul is speaking of.
And we see that in verse 2 there, he says, that ye should not so soon be shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by the word, nor by a letter as if from us. So we see that as Paul spoke to the church there, possibly there had been somebody who had come, uh, maybe someone who uh, said they were a prophet of God or a minister of God, uh, and, and they gave them a word uh, that was not true. Uh, and, and we see that Paul said, don't be shaken uh, and uh, uh, don't allow these things to trouble you. Uh, he said, uh, uh, whether they came uh, uh, by a someone uh, uh, who came with it or, or by a word, uh, or, or he said, or even uh, uh, by, uh, nor by a letter as from us. You know, we see that Paul said, uh, uh, and there may have been someone who had written a letter to the church there at Thessalonica, and, and they may have uh, uh, have taken and forged the Apostle Paul's name uh, that the people would uh, be uh, in tr uh, troubled uh, at what was taking place. And I'm sure that the church there as they were there, that they probably uh, were seeing a lot of tribulation. There was probably a lot of trials that were going on. There was probably a lot of things that was happening uh, to the believers in Jesus Christ uh, as we see uh, that the church, uh, as it uh, had been, uh, that had been persecuted uh, from the very beginning, as you look back at the book of Acts, uh, that the church had been, uh, from the very beginning, uh, from the very beginning, had been uh, taken up and been persecuted. And we see that Paul said, don't let these things trouble you. Don't let them shake uh, uh, that uh, doctrine, uh, that sound doctrine in which uh, that you have uh, received of the Apostle Paul. He said, but remember this. He said uh, that as that the day of the Lord is at hand. And you know, we see that the Apostle Paul, uh, even almost 2,000 years ago, uh, as he spoke there to uh, the church at Thessalonica, he said, uh, as that the day of Christ is at hand. We see how that uh, uh, we look today and we see how much closer we are to that day uh, than when uh, uh, the Apostle Paul wrote this letter. We see that in verse 3 there, the Apostle Paul said, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. We see that uh, there's going to be a time uh, of great apostasy. You know, last Sunday as I preached, uh, I, I preached a little bit about the apostasy, about the falling away uh, uh, of the church. And we see there is coming a time. Uh, and we see that as that time comes, uh, uh, that uh, uh, those that, that are religious, uh, uh, that there is going to be a falling away uh, uh, from, uh, uh, going away from the truth. <coughs> and we see that we live in that time right now. But we see that he goes on there and, and as far as uh, uh, the people uh, falling away from the truth. And the Bible goes on there, and it says uh, uh, that uh, that sad man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. You know, there's a lot of people today uh, uh, that as they, they look around and, and they speak about, uh, uh, there's many people uh, uh, that have a knowledge uh, uh, of uh, uh, what the Bible says. And there's a lot of people that speak about uh, uh, those, uh, and, and they wonder who uh, uh, this man of perdition, this man that uh, uh, we're going to see uh, uh, as it speaks on down there, uh, uh, is the one uh, who will come uh, that was spoken of uh, uh, all the way back in Daniel. Uh, we see that he spoke of uh, uh, in the book of Revelations. Uh, uh, this man uh, is uh, uh, the one who is called uh, the Antichrist. Now we see uh, uh, that uh, uh, John, uh, in, in the book of 1 John, uh, uh, he spoke about, he said, little children, uh, uh, he said uh, uh, that there are, uh, the Antichrist is coming, and he said there are many Antichrists, uh, and we see uh, uh, that there are many uh, uh, that
that are uh, that were there in the day of John, and there's many today uh, that are anti-Christ. And, and we see, but there is coming one, uh, this man of perdition, uh, this one uh, who is uh, part of the trinity of evil uh, that is spoken of, uh, this man who is called the Antichrist uh, that will come. The Bible says uh, that who opposes and exalting the self uh, above all that is called God. We see that this man, uh, as he comes, uh, uh, he is coming with great uh, words, uh, great swelling words. Uh, uh, he is going to come uh, and, and he is going to proclaim uh, that he can bring peace uh, uh, into this world. He is going to bring uh, uh, about uh, a, a false peace. Uh, uh, he is going to bring about uh, uh, those that will follow him because uh, uh, we see uh, the, of his, uh, 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 he's going to have such uh, words that uh, uh, that will just cause people uh, uh, to uh, uh, flock to him. The Bible says, uh, though that this man, uh, this one has spoken of, uh, that he opposes uh, and he exalts himself above all that is called God. He is going to try uh, uh, to uh, uh, bring himself up uh, uh, higher uh, uh, than Almighty God. Uh, uh, you remember, uh, uh, the Bible tells us uh, uh, that uh, uh, Satan, uh, uh, that there was war in heaven, uh, and, and Satan, uh, uh, he tried to overcome uh, uh, the angels of God. Uh, he wanted to be higher uh, than God, and, and we see uh, that he, uh, because of his uh, his uh, wanting to be uh, uh, exalted above God, uh, that he was brought down uh, to this earth. And we see uh, that his Antichrist uh, is one, uh, as it speaks here, uh, that is wanting to be worshipped, uh, and he is wanting to set himself up above God Almighty. We see that the Bible tells us uh, that it, as it goes on there, and it says, uh, uh, "Or that is worship, so that he, uh, so that he, uh, as God, sitteth in the temple of God." You know, we see that this is speaking about uh, during the tribulation period uh, when uh, uh, that man, uh, uh, as he will take uh, and, and he will bring, uh, uh, try to bring, and he'll bring a false peace into this world. Uh, uh, but it is during uh, the time of the tribulation. It is during the time uh, in which the church has already been translated. Uh, the Bible goes on there and it says uh, uh, that he will sit uh, uh, in the temple of God showing himself uh, uh, showing uh, himself that he is God. Uh, and, and he will uh, try to build himself up as God. Uh, you know we see uh, uh, that as uh, I was uh, uh, studying this message and I was thinking about this message. Uh, uh, we see that Satan, uh, he he is constantly uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, bring uh, about uh, a, a, a false uh, uh, hood uh, to the world, uh, uh, trying to uh, show them uh, that uh, uh, he is the one that needs to be worshipped uh, other than uh, uh, God Almighty. Uh, uh, you know, we see that uh, uh, he uh, uh, takes, uh, uh, and just as uh, uh, there is counterfeit uh, uh, money out there and counterfeit this and that, uh, uh, we see uh, uh, that there is a counterfeit God, uh, and that is uh, uh, that is Satan uh, himself uh, uh, with his uh, false prophet uh, and uh, the Antichrist, uh, uh, the Trinity of evil, uh, uh, as we see, uh, and we see that this one uh, uh, that sets himself up as uh, uh, the uh, uh, God in the temple uh, uh, in, in the time uh, of the tribulation, uh, uh, that he is the one. Uh, of evil. And the Bible goes on there and he says, and, and I believe uh, that Paul as he speaks about these things uh, uh, to the church there at Thessalonica, uh, he's saying these things to them uh, to bring to them a point uh, that uh, goes on there and it's speak, it's spoken of uh, in verse 6 and 7. Uh, and we see, uh, before we see, he says, remember you not that when I was with you I told you these things, uh, uh, that Paul had already explained uh, these things to the church there, uh, and uh, uh, yet we see that they were troubled uh, uh, because uh, of uh, uh, whoever had uh, uh, been trying to show them these things uh, uh, that uh, uh, they were they thought uh, uh, had were taking place uh, even in their day. 
And you know, we see uh, uh, that as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, Paul uh, uh, makes the statement here, and we see uh, uh, that as he says here in verses uh, 6 and 7, he says, Now ye know what withholdeth, uh, uh, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Uh, now, you know, we see that uh, as the church began, uh, and, and even throughout the, uh, the beginning of time, uh, uh, that iniquity has worked. Uh, uh, it has been working uh, uh, from the time uh, of uh, uh, the first uh, 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 the first time that uh, they, uh, Adam and Eve were deceived in the Garden of Eden. Uh, and, and we see that iniquity uh, uh, has worked. Uh, and it is been working. Uh, it has been uh, something that has been continuously happening uh, in our world. Uh, and we see uh, that Paul said, uh, as he said unto uh, the church there, he said, for the mystery of iniquity hath doeth already work. Uh, he said, only he who now letteth will let until he is taken out of the way. We see that Paul said to the church there as he spoke to them, uh, he said uh, uh, that uh, that Holy Spirit uh, uh, is the one uh, who has uh, uh, from uh, uh, the beginning has uh, uh, held back uh, uh, the onslaught uh, of iniquity. We see that uh, uh, that iniquity uh, uh, will uh, come into uh, uh, full play, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, when uh, uh, the, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, is taken out of the way. We see that as uh, uh, you think about that, uh, uh, you think about uh, uh, what that truly means, uh, uh, because we see uh, uh, that uh, as the church uh, uh, is here in this world, uh, uh, you know, we see that Jesus spoke to us uh, about being the light uh, and the salt. Uh, uh, you know, we see uh, uh, that the salt, uh, uh, that it, uh, it prevents decay, uh, uh, and we see that the light, uh, it shines uh, uh, over the darkness, uh, and and uh, it obscures uh, that darkness. Uh, uh, but when uh, the church is taken away, when the church is out of here, uh, uh, when the church has been translated, uh, uh, we see uh, uh, that that salt uh, uh, that kept uh, uh, the uh, uh, decay from happening uh, and that light uh, uh, that uh, has kept that darkness from uh, overcoming, uh, uh, it will be gone uh, and, and we see uh, uh, that then the iniquity will abound. We see that iniquity will uh, uh, will abound uh, uh, so greatly, uh, uh, and that is, my friends, during uh, uh, the time of the tribulation. So you know we see uh, as he goes here and as he says, uh, uh, but the Holy Spirit it, it will be still left here. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit will, uh, uh, but it will not be holding back uh, uh, the floodgates uh, of iniquity. It will not be holding back uh, the floodgates of evil as it once did. But we see that the Holy Spirit will still be here uh, uh, dealing uh, uh, with people. Uh, uh, but you know we see that the Bible goes on and it says, Then shall that wicked be revealed, uh, that the wicked one, and uh, it uh, will be re revealed. Uh, you know, we see that that Holy, uh, uh, Holy Spirit uh, as it is uh, taken out of the way, uh, uh, and we see uh, uh, that uh, that the iniquity will abound, uh, and, and that wicked one, uh, uh, that it uh, uh, will be revealed, uh, uh, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit uh, uh, of his mouth, and shall destroy uh, with the brightness of his coming. Uh, you know, we see uh, as we think about that, even though uh, that uh, during that seven year period uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, Satan and, and the uh, Antichrist is going to uh, uh, take uh, and have uh, a full uh, uh, be able to have a full reign here on this earth uh, we see uh, uh, that it is only going to be for a short time we see that the Bible tells us uh, how that is going to last for seven years and then we see that the Bible says there in verse 8, it says, And then that shall that wicked one, uh, or that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And then it goes on, he says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. You know, we see that's this one who is coming. 
that he is molded and shaped by Satan himself. And he is going to do all the wickedness, all the evil, all the deceitfulness that Satan has ever done and is going to be magnified in that seven year period. And we see, he goes on, he says, for this cause shall God send them strong delusion. You know, we see in that time during that tribulation period, there is going to be strong delusion. And we see that it says that they shall believe a lie. Oh, you know, we see that as we look in our world today, we see such a great delusion that's going on. And we see how people are flocking to the lie that is being told every place we go. And we see how that we see that uh, there is going to be a time when it is going to be stronger than ever uh, and that delusion is going to be so great uh, and that it is going to blind uh, the eyes of the people that they're going to they're going to blindly follow uh, uh, this antichrist uh, uh, thinking he is the way he is the one uh, who has come uh, to make everything perfect in this world you know but we go on there verse 12 and it says but uh, they shall by but it says that they all might uh, uh, be damned uh, who believe not the truth. You know, we see that these are all going to be judged. The ones who have uh, uh, believed a lie and followed after it and have turned away from the truth, it see, we see that they are going to be judged. They are going to uh, uh, go out uh, into eternity uh, uh, without God because they have followed after uh, this one. They followed after this one who uh, uh, has uh, uh, led them down uh, the dark path uh, uh, to destruction. Uh, and you know, we see he said that they uh, uh, have not believed the truth, uh, uh, but they have had pleasure in unrighteousness. Uh, uh, they have taken pleasure in all the things uh, uh, of the wicked one. Uh, and you know, we see how uh, as we look at this scripture and we think about what, uh, what Paul told the church there. You know, we can see uh, uh, that we, uh, uh, as the church, uh, uh, we are going to uh, be translated. Uh, uh, we see that uh, as we look and we think about uh, this world, <clears throat> as we think about this world that we live in, as we think about the things uh, uh, that have taken place uh, and, and are taking place today, uh, uh, we see that these things are nothing compared to the time of the tribulation. But thank God uh, that the church will not be here. We as the church, uh, uh, as we look and as we think about what Paul has said, uh, we see what Jesus said uh, to uh, uh, the churches uh, uh, in uh, the book of Revelation. Uh, uh, you know, we see uh, uh, that those uh, uh, who have been washed uh, in, in the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, those who uh, uh, whose garments uh, are white as snow, we won't have to worry uh, uh, about uh, uh, going through uh, uh, that tribulation period uh, uh, because uh, uh, we are part uh, of God's family and we're going to uh, be taken uh, uh, before that ever takes place. Uh, and so, you know, we see as we think uh, about what Paul said there, uh, uh, take courage uh, uh, that uh, uh, as a believer in Jesus Christ, uh, you won't have to worry uh, about the great tribulation that is going to take place. Uh, you won't have to worry about the things uh, that are going to happen uh, in that seven year period. Uh, and if you're here, if you're listening today uh, and uh, uh, you're lost, uh, you need to understand uh, that uh, you can uh, uh, have a way out of that uh, uh, if you would come and, and give your life to Jesus Christ. If you would come and, and invite him uh, uh, to become your savior. Uh, and, and you may say, well, how do I do that? Uh, all you have to do is just repent of your sins uh, and, and just ask Jesus uh, uh, into your heart heart. Uh, uh, you know, we see that you have to admit uh, admit you're a sinner uh, and, and you can't save yourself. Uh, Jesus said uh, that we have to come as a little child. Uh, uh, we have to come uh, knowing that we can't do it ourselves, but it is only through what Jesus Christ 
will do for us, uh, uh, that we can have salvation. Uh, and, and then we have to believe, uh, uh, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and you shall be saved. Uh, and, and we have to uh, confess our sins before Him, uh, and, and we have to uh, uh, confess uh, uh, and uh, believe uh, and, and invite Him in, uh, and He will save us from our sins. So today, as you hear this message, as you think about what it has to say. I hope and pray that if you <clears throat> I hope and pray if you are lost that you would give your life to Jesus as you have heard and you've realized that what I said is the truth. That it is the truth that, that Jesus Christ, that he loves you and he cares for you and he died for you and he's coming back for the church one day and, and we see that it won't be very long now. And as the church, we're going to be out of here. And then that great tribulation. And if you don't want to be a part of that tribulation, you need to give your life to Him. And we're going to ask that as we pray, that you would just pray a little prayer and invite Him into your heart. Invite Him into your life. Just pray, asking forgiveness of your sins. And just asking Him to cleanse you. He said, if you will come... He said, I, you, I'm faithful and just. And this is Jesus speaking to forgive you of all your sins and all your unrighteousness. And so if today God is speaking to your heart through the Holy Spirit, I encourage you just to, to pray a prayer and ask him into your life. And then make that public. Confess it. The people will hear that you have been saved. And let Christians know that they can rejoice with you over this that has happened in your life. And Christian, today, <clears throat> we need to be busy. We need to be doing what God wants us to do so that as we look and as we think about the things that are going to take place, that we can win the lost at any cost before we're taken out of here. So at this time, we're going to bow for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, as we come to you once again, we just thank you. Lord, we praise you. Father, for your word. Father, for your assurance. Lord, that we are your children. And not only are we your children, but Father, we know that one day you're going to come and you're going to take uh, all of those who are believers we're going to be with you forevermore. And I pray, Father, today if there's a lost person as they have heard this message, the Father has stirred something in their heart, and they realize that there's truth in these words, that today would be that day when they would just invite Jesus into their life right now, just right here at this time. And Father, that they would just, as they invite him into their life, that they would begin living and begin walking in that, that road that brings us to heaven. And Lord, I pray as Christians that we would just be encouraged. Lord, that we would just be rejoicing and knowing that you are our Savior. Father, we pray now be with us. And as we close this part of our service, we just thank you and praise you again. Father, for all that you've done, we ask this in your Son, Jesus Christ's precious name. this time, Sister Edith has a, another song for us, and as she sings for us, I want you just to, just to, uh, just have somebody, just let somebody know uh, and share this with somebody today that they will hear the message.